Hello again, this is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the complete ASP.NET course. After that kind of marathon lesson that we just went through, this one will be much shorter. But I'd like to start before we go on and actually do the validation summary, which we're going to do in a minute. Um, I'd like to start by taking a look at some of these different attributes that you see here, because many of them are things that you're going to find in every kind of validator. Of course, you need the ID because every ASP.NET control must have a unique ID. You need the run at server. And again, you need that because the run at server is what tells it that, that it is a, an ASP.NET control that should be again rendered at the server. We've got error message. And it holds the error message. Okay. Right now, we're not using what's called the text property, which you're going to see in the next lesson. Since we're not using it, the error message is the text that appears on the page. If you say, I don't understand what you mean, you will in just a couple minutes. We've got the control to validate property right here. Pretty self-explanatory. It's the server ID of the control that you need to validate. All right. We've got the CSS class property here. And it's always recommended you have some kind of a CSS class because this allows you to set the CSS class attribute that's applied to that text. This again is where we're coming in and we are putting in the bold and the red color. All right. We've got display right here and we have it equal to dynamic. The display property is what determines whether or not the hidden error message takes up space. When you set it to static, which we haven't, it takes up real estate, or it takes up space on your screen, even if it's hidden. Dynamic hides the error message until it needs to be displayed. That's what we're using. When you have a setting of none, the control is not visible at all. All right? So we're going to see all that in just a couple minutes. Now, in this one, we had the control to compare, which is unique to this particular one. All right, but that's, that's because we're using the compare validator. There's also a few other things that are in here. We're going to look at the text property in just a minute. And that's what's used that, as the text that the validation control displays on the page. All right, so we're going to put a, a red asterisk in there. You're going to see that in just a minute. Okay? All right. There's also properties or things in here that I did not use, such as there's an is valid property that you typically don't worry about at design time, but at runtime, the is valid runs, and it's true if your page passed all validation tests, and it's false if it did not. There's a set focus on error. So if you're using client-side scripting, it gives the focus to the first control that generated the error. So in other words, if we had a, an error in our name field, it would put the mouse right there. There is an enable client script that determines whether or not the control provides validation at the client. The default to this is true. So if you want to turn off client scripting, you'd set that to false. There is a validation group property where you can group controls together. So if you had a login page, for example, with a username and a password on it, you could put those into a group. All right. In just a minute, we're going to talk about the validation summary. And you're going to hopefully discern or be able to tell the difference between the text property and the error message property. When you set both of them at the same time, the validation control should display the text property. All right, and again, if you don't get it, hopefully you will in just a couple of minutes. I want to mention a couple other things that are in here. We looked at the range property. And when we had the range property, what was unique there were these two things, the minimum and the maximum. Also, since we were using numbers, we had to set type because the type on these controls always defaults to being an integer. We don't want that. I'm sorry, it, I'm, let me say that again. The type always defaults to being a string. We wanted it to be an integer. All right. We looked at a regular expression validator where we had to put in a validation expression. 
that enables you to check a value against some kind of a regular expression. All right, the compare validator I just mentioned to you. Now, let's suppose for the compare validator, all right, what we wanted in here, what we did was we checked to make sure that the, let's see, let's go down. Here we just wanted to make sure that they were the same. All right. And when we use the compare validator, well, that was a range validator, but when we use the compare validator, one thing we could have done is we could have checked to make sure that, for, ex for example, we could have asked you to enter a salary. And that salary would have had to have been greater than or equal to zero. So with a compare validator, you could put an operator in there, which you could put in equal, not equal, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, etc. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and we're going to put in a required field validator. Now, rather than doing a lot of typing again, and you saw how long that took when we did it before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of the code that I have in here, everything that's in between my content tags. So starting with a style tag, and right before the ending contact tag, so right there, I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Then I'm going to bring up my validation summary, and I'm just going to paste it in. All right, so right now what I've done in essence is I've duped, duplicated, so these two pages are now the same. Just to show that, all right, just to prove that, I'm going to save this and run this page, and it should look exactly, whoop, okay, there's errors. An error occurred during the compilation. Please review the specific details. And I'll tell you what the error was. All right, let's go back to design mode. All that stuff is in here, but I didn't click my validate button to bring up that. There was no code associated with it. I think that should fix it. So let's go back, save it, and run it again. Now these two are duped. They are the exact same thing. So I'm going to make a few changes in here. All right. So such as, well, let's just start. I don't particularly need all of the text to be navy, but I'll give it all a certain size. So let's say font size, we'll make it uh, 14 pixels. Okay. All right. Um, all the stuff that's in here. The table, well, we really didn't need the text align right, but that, that'll be fine anyway. That's fine. Uh, the H1, yeah. The H2, yeah, those are, those are all fine the way they are. Okay? So, all right. So this will now be validation example two. I'm going to save that and run it because I want to show you right away that other than just the fact that it's two, you can see the color has changed. But other than that, everything is still the same as it was last time. All right, so why did I have the color change? Okay, just so we, we could tell the difference between the two of them. All right, just by, you know, just taking a quick look. All right, so I've got my table in here, my full name. What I'm going to end up doing in here is in each one of these where I have any kind of a validator, all right, right at the end, I'm going to add text equals and then just put an asterisk in there. All right, so I'm going to put that into each one of these. So every validator that I have. And you might say, well, why, oops, why are you doing that, Jeff? Hopefully it'll, it'll make a lot more sense in just a couple minutes.
somehow I lost my ending tag there. Well, I goofed something up here. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's what I goofed up. Okay. So, this should be up here. And there we go. All right, so again, I want to add this everywhere. Hopefully I didn't miss any. I'm going to take a real quick look back again. And I think that, I think at least, that all of them are in there. Now there's not real much that I'm going to have to do here. I'm a, Believe it or not, I am almost finished. All right? But I do want to mention just a couple things. Again, We've got a field in here that's called text, and we've got a field in here that's called error message. So there's our error message, name is required, and there's our text. What we want to have happen, now we're about to add a validation summary, is now this name is required, we want that to appear way down on the bottom of the screen. And we just want a red asterisk to appear that's all we want to have appear when there's an error, all right? So what's the magic that we have to do in order to be able to do that? Well, we've got most of it is done right now. So there's a very little bit that we still have to come in here and do. And in particular, I want to go after my button. So I'm not even in the table. So after my button, I want to hit Enter. All right, and I want to come down here and let's put in a, a couple blank lines. All right, and then I want to come in here and I want to add one of these validation summary controls right there. All right. Now, I'm just going to keep the name as validation summary because there's only one. And we'll add a few other properties other than just our ID. All right, and our run at properties, such as, well, we want our CSS class to be equal to error. We want our display mode to be equal to what's called bullet list, because we want a list of bullets. You're going to see that in just a minute. Uh, show message dialog. If I want to, I'm going to set that equal to, whoops, not mess dialog show message dialog, I want to set that equal to false, all right? And if I set it equal to true, what it'll do is bring up a JavaScript alert box, and I really don't want that. I'm going to set enable client scripting. I'll set that equal to true. And I'll set show summary equal to true. And then finally, I'll put in here some header text that just says something like, you must fix the following errors, something like that. All right, and I'm going to give this whole thing a height too. So, let's see. We'll see right now if I made any mistakes. I'm going to save it, run the program again. It compiles clean, that's always a good sign. Validate. There's my errors down there. That's my summary. Notice I get my asterisks over here. All right, again, if I type in something in every field, Hello one two three. 
hello123, and click validate, everything goes away because it all worked. But you always should go in and try to test all the permutations. All right, so if I leave that off, okay, there's my error, name is required. Put in an invalid social security. So SSS must be in this format, and there's my error. Age, I should put in an out of range age, all right, both on the low end and on the upper end, okay. Password, I should leave it too small, must be that. And, all right, now I'm not getting an error because these two are the same, all right. Okay, so that's most of the permutations. Now that's basically just about all I wanted to show you in here. So just to repeat one last time, all right, just to repeat one last time here, that as you're going in here and as you are writing this type of stuff, all right, in other words, when you're going in and you're doing validation, always validate all user input. Just assume all input is bad. Next, provide error messages that reflect or are indicative of what the problem is. All right. So you can see, for example, when I have nothing in there. Name is required, social security number is required, age is required, password is required, etc. There's always something. As I did, use the CSS class attribute. I could have even made this bigger instead of making it 12 like I did. I maybe should have made that about 16. All right, so in other words, if I'd have come in here, let's stop, stop the run, and in my error class, if I had come in and said font size 16 pixels, all right, then run the program again. Okay, it's a little bit bigger. And maybe it doesn't even look like it is. I must have turned it off someplace else. All right, but hopefully this helped get you on the road to ASP.NET user input validation.